Hello again everybody and welcome back to my exploration of the Conjuration perk tree using the Ordinator perk overhaul mod. Okay, so last episode I was talking and talking and flapping my gums and not killing anything, so I think this episode we should go kill some stuff, huh? Alright, so I am going to go outside, get the band back together, and maybe we can talk about some stuff in the meantime. Okay, so real quick, last episode I talked about a lot of stuff, um, but there is one thing that I forgot to mention, um, and it is another reason not to choose um, two-handed over one-handed um, if you're having trouble deciding. And that is that power attack damage... Ooh, it is really dark. Let's throw down some night vision. Okay. Um, power attack cost, in terms of stamina, is tied to the weight of the weapon. So, if you are wielding a two-handed weapon, it is going to be much heavier than a one-handed weapon. Which means you're not going to be able to cast, or to uh, throw out as many power attacks per stamina pool as you would with a one-handed weapon. And as we've discussed, power attacks are very important for this character because of Spell Scribe. And Spell Scribe is very important for this character because we cannot temper our bound weapon. The bound weapon is going to do as much damage as it's going to ever do from the beginning of its life on. Okay, so we have everybody there. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention really quick is that um, I think I need to rehook up my fast healing. Here we go. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention has to do with Blind Guardian. This perk in the Illusion skill tree that we thought was going to give us an additional minion. Well, it turns out it does not. It is still bound by the minion cap that you have for everything else. So if you have all five of your minions, which I think is the max under Ordinator, if you have all of them cast out and you try to activate one of them for Blight and Guardian, nothing will happen. If you have four of them, and you activate one for Blind Guardian, then you will get the actual Blind Guardian. Um, now, you might be asking, well, why would I want Blind Guardian then? And I am here to tell you that you do not want Blind Guardian for this character type. Um, in fact, any other uh, minion type creature, including the uh, Spirit Saber Cat, the Lunar Familiar from the Lady Stone under the Andromeda um, Standing Stone Overhaul. Or some of the Spirit Wolves that you get in, I think, uh, the Two-Handed Skill Tree and the Archery Skill Tree. Neither one of those will pop out if you are already at your max minion count. And we've run into this at the beginning of this series, the series as well, when... Um, Unbound randomly gave us uh, the Lunar Familiar, or the uh, Lady Stone. And we had to contend with that Spirit Cat. Uh, it kept eating all of, our, uh, all of our minions that we were trying to explore. So same thing here. Um, I think that that still is the case if you try to activate... Um, an enemy NPC or any other NPC as well. It's not just your own minions. That blind guardian will count as a minion. And if you already have the max, it's not going to pop it out. So there's that. Uh, sort of a um, public service announcement there for a piece of information that I was mistaken on earlier. Now it is corrected. Um, what else? Okay, those were the only two main pieces of info that I wanted to touch on before we got started with killing stuff. So let's go ahead and go kill some stuff. I think... 
I wanted to go do some Forsworn stuff, I and particularly Bard's Leap. Yeah, the Lost Valley Redoubt. This is gonna be this is gonna be fun. I like the Forsworn stuff because it's usually very open, sprawling, long dungeon clears with lots and lots of enemies. Should give us a lot of opportunity to showcase what this character can do. Um, now I'm trying to look for a way. Go to the Restoration Shrine here and see how that works. I'm trying to look for a map marker that I can fast travel to that will allow us to approach this area in a more um, normal way. I don't want to just be plopped right down into the thick of it. Excuse me. Had to take a swig of my caffeinated beverage. Okay, where are we looking here? Oh, there it is, right over there. Okay. Let's get across here. Go ahead and cast our battle axe. Can't be ready for battle without a battle axe. We'll warm up with some mud crab action. Looks like there was some collateral damage there with that poor mountain goat. Um, I gotta tell you, it's really hard not to chase those, uh, dragonflies around down there. <laughs> uh, I've been doing a lot of play on my Chemical Whispers profile, getting him up to the point where I can actually start doing a Let's Play type thing, and recording lots of footage for the first couple of intro cinematic episodes. I'm really excited to share that once that comes around. Um, probably still another week or two away from releasing anything, but uh, picking up steam for sure. Okay, we got a trap over here. Okay, so even with the huge uh, damage nerf that we take, I wouldn't say huge damage nerf. Uh, in fact, we're doing a little bit more damage with our there we go. With our battle axe than we were doing with the sword. Just a little tiny bit though, not much. Um, but the... Uh, ooh, that hurts. Um, I'm sorry. I got lost in the gameplay. <laughs> Um, as you can see, the uh, the slight nerf that we're taking... Did we lose all of our... Oh no, we got our minions here. Connor just trembled like he had lost all his minions. I'm sorry. So even though we are slightly weakened by not having a spell in one hand and a, uh, and a one-handed weapon in the other, you can tell that Connor is still plen plenty strong with a, with a bound battle axe. Where's the ravager? Here he is. And you can see that uh, absolute power, that levitation spell, is still working with our lightning cloak. If you're going to take on a two-handed weapon, it's very important that you still have... Uh, a cloak of some kind. Oops, I just killed my uh, Dramora Lord. Um, because you still get a buff to destruction damage. We still have all those perks in the destruction tree uh, regarding our lightning spell and our shock damage. Um, that still all applies to uh, to our cloak spells as well. a briar heart. Excellent.
Okay, I'm going to throw down a quick save here. So we've got a lot going on. I don't want to... Uh, I don't want crashing to be an issue. And if we do crash, I don't want to have to redo all this. So, uh, we lost a couple of Dramora Lords. Let's go ahead and refresh those guys. Heal up everybody that we already have. And back to the Bound Battle Axe. Alright, there we go. Back in business. Who's next? Is there anybody next? I have a feeling that the uh, Briarheart came down from up here. I think further deeper into the reach down in the south here that there is um, some hags performing a ritual to create another Briarheart. I, yeah, we're, it's right over here to the left now if I remember correctly. So we have some more dudes to fight. Or dudettes in this case. She was getting a little twitchy. She was uh, convulsing and she was being affected by the levitation effect from Absolute Power, I believe. Um, so also you might notice that uh, while we have less options, that kind of streamlines the gameplay here. If you're going to take a two-handed weapon uh, or, you know, the Bound Battle Axe as I'm doing here... Um, you're kind of freed up a little bit to just focus on melee gameplay and you don't have to worry about you know trying to remember to to cast your left-handed spell all the time to boost the damage in your right-handed weapon and, and all that and trying to manage different spells for different for different times you kind of just you know pop your pop your cloak and your flesh spell and get to it so if you're more comfortable with melee gameplay and you don't like to mess around with that magic a whole lot, um, you know this might be the this might be the play style for you. Now I also seem to remember that there's more Forsworn stuff up here as well. Maybe I'm just thinking of this chest. I thought there was another encampment like further further down here somewhere. Cradle Stone Tower. Yeah, I think we're all cleared at this point. Gloom Reach. Okay. So what should we do now? This is going to be a really short episode if that's the only thing we're going to do. How about more Forsworn? I like Forsworn. Fort Sunderguard, or Sunguard, I'm sorry, is, is pretty populated. We'll go ahead and take that on. So yeah, if you want to be more like a magey character and you enjoy... Oh, this isn't a Forsworn camp anymore with immersive patrols. It's a... Uh... It's just a straight up Civil War pitched battle. Alright. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna mess with that. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, what else do we have? Leakwind Bluff, maybe? We'll go try that out. I believe this is a smaller Forsworn encampment. Really? Just the one Dramora Lord? Let's wait a little while, see if the other guys catch up. Alright, and Connor's hungry. Okay, I am going to eat. And I'm going to get the band back together, and I'll see you in a, in a few seconds. And we lost a... Dramora Lord. That means there's likely still a Dramora Lord out there somewhere. Alright, well we're good enough with what we have.
All right. Let's go take on some more Reach Bastards. I'm a bit lost. Okay, so the encampment is actually up there. Oh, there's the staircase that I was missing. Alright, here we go. Now they're in for it. Now that I found the stairs. Never should have come here. some first person gameplay here too. Oh yeah, pansy. Ooh, two-handed skill book. That's relevant, yeah. Okay, um, well that was really quick. <laughs> what else do we got? Okay, why don't we do, um, we'll go do Shriekwind Bastion. I think there's some, uh, some vampire and some just general undead baddies in there. Should be fun. I think I'm going to do this one in first per person, just to switch it up a little bit. Easier to land timed blocks when you're closer, when your view is closer to the enemy. In my opinion, anyway. Where's the other one? Who am I missing? Oh, they're fighting each other now. <laughs> Alright. I'll let you guys figure that out. Connor actually draws lots of power from his minions just indirectly. Um, he's stronger with them around. They are stronger with him around. So, just having them around is a buff. Even if they're distracted doing something else, it still helps us to have us to have them around. But it looks like they may have killed each other off. So <laughs> uh, before we go inside, I'm gonna go ahead and, and refresh the crew. We don't need any help with lowly Draugr. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'll be right back before we go in. Okay, we got the whole crew. Uh, let's go ahead and get in there and. Redead some undead bastards. Hello, bastards. Pretty sure we've done this one already with Aralos. He found it an interesting mixture of the familiar ancient evil of the Draugr and in the new vile evil of the vampires. Of course, being a druid, he hates undead of all kinds. So he was happy to uh, cleanse this place, as it were. Ugh. Skeletons stand no chance against the Lightning Cloak. <laughs> Watch out for the traps.
And you can see what I was saying in the last episode about how it just takes forever to get a regular attack out there and you're kind of at the mercy of your opponent while that's going on. Now, if you're running a dodge mod, or TK dodge in particular, I don't know if dodge mods in general allow it, but um, if you're running TK dodge, you can cancel your attack with a dodge as such. Oops, I did not mean to kill that guy. <laughs> All right, we'll respawn him. So you do have a defensive option while you're mid-swing to get the hell out of there if you need to, but um, you know, it kind of becomes a zero-sum game at a certain point. Oops. Uh, just because if you're starting to attack and you're dodging out of it to cancel it all the time, then, you know, what's the point of attacking at all, right? Ooh, an imbued eyeball. Sounds interesting. I feel like there's more up there. Vampire down here somewhere. I missed the door. You know, when I played this with Aralos, I rehearsed this like a ton of times to make sure that it was like enjoyable to watch and I wasn't floundering around too much. And now, at the moment, I have no idea where I'm going. So I might cut the video and I'll probably pick it back up once I figure out the right way to go. <laughs>
Okay, here we go. I found where I'm supposed to be going. I don't know what kind of bee has gotten in their bonnet, but uh, hopefully they'll catch up here because we might need some help. Or not. Another thing that I've noticed is that my distorted shape doesn't seem to be working as it was before. Um, and I wonder if it's conflicting with uh, Lightning Cloak. Because the way distorted shape is supposed to work is you're supposed to be intangible for 10 seconds. Um, from the uh, from the Ebony Flesh spell that we're, that we're casting. Um, until either that 10 seconds is up or you perform an offensive action. I'm wondering if our lightning cloak is attacking things or it counts as an offensive action and then suddenly uh, that disables the distorted shape and we're not intangible anymore. Okay, this just goes back out to the Falkreath Forest, so don't need to mess there. Um, I think there is one more little mini vampire den upstairs that, that we can go clear out. Okay, second half of this is upstairs, and I think there's a very powerful vampire in here, so I'm going to quick save. I might even wait a second. Let all my minions catch up to me here. Is Frosty really the only one that's left? I think we're going to need a little more help than that, so... Get everybody back. Okay, back in action. Here we go. Quick save. Who wants some, huh? Who wants a little? Okay, don't fall for this. That's a trap. This is the real chain you're looking for. You're gonna yank a chain. Yank that chain. Okay. There's that massacre. That kicked in. That helped a lot. It's a pretty cool effect when it actually works. Can't seem to uh, activate him here. Interesting. Probably got some really cool equipment on, too. I wanted to loot him. What's this? Speech? Sure, why not? Sure, why not? Okay, now I think that there is one more high-level Draugr even farther upstairs here. Ooh, and a boss chest. Okay, everybody take your drama mean. This is gonna get a little little woozy. Alright. Okay. One last dude, I think. Oh, just a scourge. I eat you guys for breakfast. Kellogg's frosted scourge specific. Alright. Uh, just do some light looting. Alright. Okay. I'm done. So yeah. As you can see, two-handed is... It's a little more limited than the one-handed. It doesn't really provide that much of a damage boost, but you really didn't need a damage boost <laughs> to begin with. But... All that said, it is still very effective. It is legitimate, it is viable for the highest levels of difficulty. Um, so, if this kind of thing appeals to you, have at it. Don't let me say that uh, you have to use Bound Sword instead of the Bound Battle Axe. Because uh, you don't. All right, so I think that's it. Pretty simple, pretty cut and dry, pretty short and sweet episode of just killing stuff with our enormous ghostly battle axe. 
I had fun. I hope you did too. But I think I'm going to cut it here. And uh, until next time, take care.